Hey Beth, this is your procedure to hooking up instrument tracks and MIDI tracks to the palettes. So the concept of the instrument track, if we were to create uh, a new instrument track, we would create an instrument track here. And always remember that if you want to pick your instrument, you can either pick it through this screen, it would show all of your different instruments, or if you chose not to choose it right now and you hit cancel, Oops. just add track, then what we can do is in the inspector over here in this particular window, this is where you could actually click and then add the instrument at the same time. So typically, uh, even on MIDI tracks, this is your outputs and these are your inputs. So this is just referring to where is it coming from, so what is actually triggering the track, which would be your MIDI controller. Uh, this right here would be the outputs where you would actually select the instrument itself. So on an instrument track, you can choose whatever you want. So we'll take, for example, uh, addictive drums. And then we can see the actual drums and we can see that the audio is passing right through here. Of course, I haven't selected my device yet, so we're not going to hear anything. And that's it. So basically that is how we get signal onto the track. Now, if we were to click inside of this right here, we could click on this Easy Drummer and it would take away the addictive drums and it would replace it with Easy Drummer. You could also replace it with Omnisphere or anything else. But the difference between those, uh, which is important to remember, that no matter what you have set up, this instrument track has no ability to choose MIDI channels or anything else. It is just the straight uh, selfish track, which basically means that even if you open up the atmosphere of play or anything else, the whole point of it would be, and you can hear that we've got a little kind of crazy synth, we can choose a sound, and then we would have our guitars. So if we play that note, we can hear the guitar sounds. Now, we could go into Omnisphere and we could layer a huge pad inside of here. We can add choirs and strings and whatever. So we'll just go ahead and add another sound here with the choirs here. And then make sure that when we play the notes from the MIDI controller, you would actually hear both of those sounds at the same time. So it doesn't really matter. If, if you want to make a big stack to sounds, uh, that's where you would actually do that through this page. You can you know choose individual sounds up in here. And then that does it. So. That's what an instrument track is good for. That has nothing to do with the palette. Nothing is loaded onto the palette. It is loaded directly on the track. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load in a couple of MIDI tracks. We'll just start with one. And as you can see right here, the first thing in the inspector is the input section on both tracks. This is the instrument track, and you can see all MIDI inputs is still the thing that's going to be triggering it. That does not change. The output, however, if you click in there, you can see the instrument that's loaded directly on the track versus when you go to the MIDI, the options are a little bit different. Since there's nothing actually to display inside of the track inspector right here, there's nothing that's going to be over here. So as soon as we load in, we'll just go ahead and load in Omnisphere. This is going to give us that option, of course. Do you want to create a MIDI track that's assigned to the Omnisphere plugin? We're just going to cancel that right now because we already have a MIDI track. Now what did get created? Okay, in the palette is in the number one slot is Omnisphere. Over here, we have, we'll just choose our sounds, Glorious Guitars, and now we go back to the MIDI track itself, and we can see where it's not connected, and now since we have something plugged in on the palette, you can see that Omnisphere number one, which represents number one over here, that's where we connect, we connect to it. So when we trigger it, now we can see that we have the options of channels 1 through 16. Um, so basically what you need to do is just click on uh, the MIDI track, just make sure it's armed, okay? And then you should place the notes on your MIDI controller and it'll work just fine. It's a very, very simple setup. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my MIDI controller so we can actually do that. Sorry for the extra noise here. So as, as it turns on, we can obviously just play some notes on the MIDI controller, and there we have it. Now remember that Omnisphere, anything loaded onto the palette, if it's multi-timbral, and what multi-timbral means, that if 
you click on the multi-page, you can have several different output choices and several different channel choices. Right now on the inspector, it's set to channel one. The sound is default on the first part to channel one. If we were to change this to channel two and we'll play some MIDI notes, we can see on the Omnisphere plugin and on the palette that it is, being, it is receiving some kind of data, but it's not receiving anything on the correct channel. Okay? If we transmit on channel two, then very simply now we get the sounds. Okay? So it's very, very simple in that, in that form. So if we actually change this back to channel one and change this back to channel one, then this one is transmitting, okay, which is most important, and this one is receiving. And you can see that it's receiving up here, MIDI, and it's also receiving on the actual track that it's assigned to. So if we want to make a, another sound that's completely unrelated, we can either click on the multi-page and click on the default here, or we can select the second part where it says default, and we'll just load in some choir sounds. So now that we have the choir loaded, remember, if we want to trigger the choir, we'll go to the multi-page so we can see it, you can see that the choir sound is on channel two. The original sound that we're hearing right now, which is the glorious guitars, that's on channel one. So if we want to hear the choir sound that we just loaded, we would need to come over here and make sure it's on channel two. And now we have the choir sounds, okay? Now, if we wanted to make a layer out of that, we would have to change one of these so they would match. So this is on channel one and this is on channel one. Again, we're not gonna hear anything right now because the MIDI track that's uh, transmitting is transmitting on channel two. So we'd have to make sure that that's on channel one and the receiving end, these are both on channel one, and now we can hear the glorious guitars and the sound of the choirs at the same time. So you have the ability to actually turn down, like if guitars are too loud, we can turn them down here and they can kind of match the, the two sounds up here. So you have the ability to pan the sounds if you wanted the choirs and the guitars over there, change them over here. You can have reverb effects, all sorts of different things, and you can make as big a layer as you want. Now, if we were to you know, isolate these two different things and record them separately, you definitely want them on different MIDI channels. So we need two MIDI tracks, okay? So just right click, create another MIDI track. And this by default, if you can see, it already connected it to Omnisphere and it put it on channel two. So if this was on Omnisphere channel one, we can play our guitars part, all right? And just by selecting this, it automatically is connected to Omnisphere and it's on channel two. So now we have our choirs only. All right, so you can do this for uh, then on and then on and on. So if you wanted to do the same thing with play or any other multi timbre instruments, you can create a completely different Omnisphere inside the palette. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll click on Omnisphere inside the palette. And again, this is gonna give us, do you wanna create a MIDI track assigned to the Omnisphere plugin? We'll just hit cancel right now because we wanna do it manually. And then we'll come over here and we're gonna load in different sounds into this. Now we can see right here, let's take a look at the headers of these two Omnispheres. This one says Omnisphere one, okay? Because it's loaded into the first slot on the VST palette, which is this one, okay? Now this one says Omnisphere two, okay? Because it's loaded into the second slot here. Now when we go to a MIDI track, let's go ahead and load in just a sound so we can say, put in uh, Turkish dulcimers, that'll be on one, and we'll go into the part two and put suspense is killing me. So we can see on the multi-page, and we'll look at the multi-pages back to back. So on the first on the sphere, we've got glorious guitars loaded here and the choirs loaded here. That's on the first on the sphere. On this one, we've got the Turkish dulcimers and the suspense is killing me. Now, here's the thing. Since we've got all these open spaces left on this, it wouldn't make any sense for us to open up a completely separate Omnisphere unless we intended to do something intense on these things and then we wanted to freeze the instrument later to relieve a little bit of stress from the computer processing. But the bottom line is you can take these two different sounds, make a pad or a layer or something like that out of this, but what we're going to do is we see that the Turkish Dolcimer is on channel one here, the suspense is killing me is on channel two here, and these are on channel one and two. But since they're on completely separate Omnispheres, they can both be on channels one and two, okay? Now, what we'll do over here is if we were to create uh, or reassign, we could have this one, this particular MIDI track, and we'll just call this Omni-1. So we know that it's going to the first Omnisphere. And what we'll do is we'll layer both of these sounds on channel one. 
So when I play this track, we can see that it's triggering both of the sounds on the Omnisphere, which should be guitars and choirs. Okay. Now what we'll do is over here, we'll put the dirtiest dulcimers both on channel one. Okay. But it's on a remember it's on a completely different Omnisphere. It's on the Omnisphere two. And then what we're going to do is select this MIDI track over here. We're going to call this Omni two. So we know that this one is going to be pointed to the second Omnisphere. Now this one right here, we need to make sure that when we click on the outputs to assign the MIDI track, that the second Omnisphere is chosen. Okay? If the first, track, the first Omnisphere is chosen, it's only going to point to the one with the guitars and the choirs on it. If we select the second one, then we're going to be pointing to this crazy sound. And we get, okay, now here's the thing. You can see that the MIDI track is transmitting, and this one's receiving, but notice this is on channel two. What is the, cha the sounds that we chose? They're on channel one. So we, we need to make sure that we choose the right channel, and now we can hear it. So we got all this crazy stuff going on in this particular one. So again, let's look at them side by side. Do This is the Omnisphere one. So if we select this one, you can see that in the list, it's selected to the first Omnisphere. And there we go, it's got this one. If we select this one, it's connected to the second atmosphere, which is going to this other crazy sound, the Turkish dulcimers and the suspense is killing you. So that's basically how you can load in several different instruments and reconnect them and change them. But basically both of these, if we notice, both of these particular tracks are still on channel one, but they are connected to completely different atmospheres. So again, for every single atmosphere you open, you'll have eight different sounds that you can load in. So the whole point of doing this, if you wanted to have multiple ones, is if you had a big sounding layer or if you had a whole bunch of different instruments, if you froze the instrument itself, let's go ahead and freeze it. Now there's actually no data, so I have to record it. So I'll play a few MIDI notes. Okay, so there's our MIDI data. Now we'll go ahead and freeze the track. Okay. Now, if you notice, that atmosphere disappeared. And you can also notice that the data, I can't move it, I can't change it, I can't edit it. And you can see that this track is completely, um, it's frozen, it's basically grayed out. So when we have that um, as our, um, when we freeze that, it frees up CPU usage or processing power. So you might need to do that in the future with play because it's a pretty powerful instrument. Same thing with this. We go ahead and freeze it. And again, we can't do anything until there's actual data on there. But if we froze that track, then basically we can start opening up more Omnispheres or more plays or whatever you have to. So I suggest doing this only when you are working on a, a strong set of instruments. If you're just doing something very, very simple, you don't need to freeze your instruments all the time, but it does free up processing power and it helps the overall performance of the computer. So hope this helped out and just watch this over and over and over if you ever get lost, but this should uh, keep you from uh, getting lost as far as the connections and stuff like that. So.